I, I just, Alex got in my ear and corrected me. Mohammed bin Salman did not order the killing of okay. Khashoggi with a chainsaw. Mohammed bin Salman ordered the torture and the killing of uh, Khashoggi, the Washington Post columnist, with a bone saw. So uh, I apologize for getting that wrong. Uh, the, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia ordered the torture and the killing of the Washington Post columnist with a bone saw. So we're learning more so I apologize this morning for about that wrong. the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and what it may have had in the hack and release of private and sexual text messages between Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos and Lauren Sanchez. Now stay with us. This is complicated, but it actually all comes together quite simply. Reporting has indicated that Sanchez, pro-Trump brother, may have been responsible for handing over the private information to the National Enquirer and its parent company, AMI. However, in a lengthy article in The Daily Beast, the man in charge of Bezos's investigation, Gavin De Becker, reveals that his team has, quote, concluded with high confidence that the Saudi government had access to Bezos's phone and gained private information, adding that the kingdom's motive was to retaliate against the Washington Post, which Bezos owns for its critical coverage of Jamal Khashoggi's murder at the hands of Saudi agents. De Becker also states, quote, it is unclear if AMI was aware of how those compromising texts were originally obtained. He does not provide any hard evidence for his claims, noting that the details and results of his investigation have been turned over to federal officials. AMI dismissed the claim, saying in a statement to CNBC that Sanchez's brother was the single source for the National Enquirer story. In February, Bezos accused AMI of trying to blackmail him with threats of publishing the private information and photos, unless Bezos said the National Enquirer's reporting on him was not politically motivated. That, I, Everyone's messed with the wrong man here, how, number yeah, how one. Did black, how did trying to blackmail the richest man in the world uh, turn out for AMI? Not very well. And the story, Jeremy, appears to keep getting worse now. Uh, according to this investigation, it looks like, uh, well, Gavin De Becker said that they kept throwing Sanchez at him uh, like he was a, a, some kind of patsy uh, and didn't want him to dig any deeper. He has dug deeper, and according to his investigation, the Saudis hacked into and gained access to Jeff Bezos's personal information. If that is the case, how damaging is that for the Saudi government and for the National Enquirer and AMI? It's, it's an astonishing allegation, Joe. And remember, on March 18th of this year, the Wall Street Journal reported that AMI and David Pecker uh, approved a $200,000 payment to Lauren Sanchez's brother. And, and, of course, the prevailing theory of the case is that the pro-Trump brother received a payoff from the National Enquirer. He gained access to his sister's phone. And he provided that information to the National Enquirer. Now, along comes Gavin De Becker, who is a very well respected security professional. He is, of course, paid by Jeff Bezos, but I think he has some, some independent standing of his own. He's done an uh, in depth analysis, and he says forensic analysis of the phone that Jeff Bezos was using, and he said he's seen Saudi activity on the phone. Now, he doesn't exactly state that, therefore, the Saudis took information from Jeff Bezos' phone, compromising information, and gave it to AMI, and that led to the, the publication in January of the, uh, of the photographs, or excuse me, of the description of the photographs. Um, but the implication, Joe and, and Mika, is surely that the Saudi government did something that would seem on its face to be kind of wildly irresponsible, potentially uh, unlawful and, and incredibly damaging to their own reputation once it would ultimately be revealed. Tom Nichols, what is the impact if, in fact, this investigation bears fruit and it is proven that the Saudis intentionally tried to hack Jeff Bezos's phone? Well, there's two things going on. One is we can't lose sight of the incredible fact that a tabloid that supports the president 
went after one of the president's enemies, someone the president roundly attacks, a newspaper he hates, and tried essentially to um, destroy, personally destroy, the owner of a newspaper that the president hates um, at, a, at a tabloid directed by an ally of the president. Now, if you add into that, they did this with the assistance of a foreign power that whose leader or, or next leader is under international censure for a grisly murder and one of the few people who's backing him and, and won't join that chorus of censure is that same president of the United States. At that point, the story becomes immense. As Jeremy's pointing out, the, the ramifications here in foreign policy, First Amendment, press freedom, in every direction, this becomes an explosive story, but with the proviso, if that's true, to have a, a regime that has been uh, protected somewhat from criticism by the president, working with a newspaper that supports the president to go after the newspaper that has been critical of the president and whose journalist was murdered by the regime. I mean, it really, I mean, you, you couldn't write if you wrote this up as a Robert Ludlum novel or yeah. a John le Carre novel, it, it, the publisher would send it back to you as simply too fantastic and, and too unrealistic. Right. And Jonathan O'Meara, you followed the president through the campaign. You saw time and time again the president's political opponents were smeared on the cover of the National Enquirer time and time again, whether it was Ben Carson or whether it was Ted Cruz or whether when, when the president was about to fire uh, General Flynn. Uh, the National Enquirer earlier that week said that General Flynn was a Russian spy and that Donald Trump had outed him and you knew that it was only a matter of days before he got fired. Of course, we had our own story of where White House top aides in the White House were calling us, begging us to apologize to Donald Trump, mm -hmm. saying if we would apologize to Donald Trump, he could pick up the phone, call David Pecker and kill his story that said that I would go buy cases of beer and sit and drink at Mika's house all the time. I mean, <laughs> sounds pretty good. Okay, well, first of all. Uh, well, but anyway, but, but listen, let's not become part of this story. I just like saying that because I've never bought a beer my entire life. I make people like you buy beer for me and I drink it in the car. But anyway, so. Uh, no, you don't. I know I don't. I don't drink beer. That's sort of the joke. But Jonathan, I digress a bit too much. A tad bit. Uh, but so, so, no, I'm just trying to give them a, their next cover story. Uh, but, but, but Jonathan, this has been the president's M.O. and Packer's M.O. Find political enemies of Donald Trump and go after them using the National Enquirer. Right. Whether or not they report on your drinking habits we don't is unclear. But what we do know <laughs> is that they were basically it felt like they were a wing of the campaign in 2015 and 2016, or at the very least, providing a lot of opposition research, some true, some not, time and time again. And you mentioned a few of the names, Ted Cruz most in particular, being the political opponent of then-candidate Trump, who was smeared by the National Enquirer. Let's also remember their role in the catch and kill stories with Michael Cohen, with Karen McDougal yeah. and Stormy Daniels. They were at the forefront there, too. And to underscore Tom's really important important point. Despite this murder, this brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi, which is condemned globally, this administration has not backed off their ties to Riyadh whatsoever. We have seen Secretary of State Pompeo meeting with the Crown Prince. Jared Kushner, of course, has always had a, a back channel relationship with the Crown Prince, with MBS. Uh, there, there's uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of arms sales being, that has been negotiated between Washington and Riyadh. And Saudi Arabia is at the forefront of whatever the Trump administration's Middle East peace plan is going to look like. So they have not what at all decided to distance themselves from Saudi Arabia. In fact, time and time again, including in, in interview questions that I've asked the president, Trump has not wanted to back off his ties to King Salmon and the Crown Prince. All, all right. right. Um, by, the, by the way, so I have another correction to make. Oh, my God. We're going to have a correction per, per blog now. Correct. I don't, don't drink beer. Never bought oh my God. beer in my life. I, up to one old-fashioned, maybe every other night. <laughs> Not much on alcohol. Uh, that's about it. Um, and also, uh, last block, I accidentally said that Mohammed bin Salman okay. ordered the brutal murder of a Washington Post columnist with a chainsaw. It actually was with a bone saw. <sighs> Jeremy Bash, thank you very much for being with us. Adrian Elrod, thank you as well. And just ahead, we're going to be bringing in the Washington Post's Bob Woodward, plus rural voters 
were key in helping Donald Trump win the presidency in 2016. Our next guest spent the weekend in Iowa hmm. asking 2020 candidates to pitch their vision for rural America. We'll be talking about that next on Morning Joe. Hopefully no corrections next block. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.